And now, time for something a little different. <laughs> disclosure before we begin this part of the video was an afterthought to me see this is truly my favorite game of all time bar none so this video could have easily gone on for an hour in the way of cutting some stuff from my original ideas for the video i forgot to mention a few things the first thing that this is mostly a review of the 2011 port released by christian whitehead for ma major uh, consoles pc and mobile devices I feel like this version is just a neater package than the original version with the new normal spin dash and weird collision issues mostly being worked out from the original release. Also Sonic has a new move here, the super peel out, which also looks cool and is just mostly a different spin dash. Um, also if you haven't seen the first part of my Sonic retrospective, I do sort of recommend watching that because that also kind of um, relates back to this video too, some of the points I made. I somehow forgot to keep this in the original script, so I apologize for that. But anyways, here we go. This is Sonic CD, my review of it. Stay tuned for a little experiment at the end of the video. Sonic the Hedgehog CD was released in 1993 for the mostly huge failure Sega CD, and was really the big killer app for the add-on. It never really caught on, as outside of a few stellar ports like Mortal Kombat and NBA Jam, it really didn't see a whole ton of games most people would actually want to play. For the longest time in my childhood, time travel was a huge interest of mine. I saw Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure when I was about 8 years old, and by the time I was 10, Back to the Future blew my mind. I also need to point out that I was a child of the mid-2000s, so I was a pretty weird kid. Sure, I had a GBA and played the shit out of it, and I had the current consoles, but I also had access to emulators because of my uncle, who gave me a really rare for my age experience to more platformers than the ones I already had. For example, when I got excited for Mega Man Battle Network, which was really my generation's Mega Man, because I was a big fan of the show, my uncle showed me Mega Man X and it blew my mind. The same thing kind of happened when Ninja Turtles, uh, the 2003 series, I got to see, you know, the 90s games, which were really good. And the same thing happened to Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, I got to play their copy of Sonic Advance all the time, and he showed me the other ones. I think the first one I played was Sonic 3. That's beside Advance. At the time, I couldn't get past the second zone, Hydrocity Zone, which I know it's not the correct name for it. I just prefer to call it that. It was the same kind of deal with the other ones, you know, Marble Zone, Chemical Plant. I couldn't get past any of them. And then I played Sonic CD, and I remember my first reaction to it. This one had an opening cartoon. That was amazing to me, as I hadn't seen the other games this old do this, and it looked amazing. Even at my age, I could understand when something was special for its time. Not only that, but I could t travel through time in this one. There was three versions of all the levels. There's a fourth, but I didn't know about it. Of course, I was too stupid to understand that there was a way to get a good future, I just figured it wouldn't be a good feature until I saved everything. I also made up in my head that the theory behind why Robotnik was using flowers was because Little Planet had some kind of like uh, EMP like device that was preventing the animal robots technology from working so he had to resort to the flowers so that it could get past it. I know that it was Little Planet because my uncle actually had the original case for the game because he got it at a Hollywood video or something to test out CD ripping on his PC as far as I understood. This is one of those games I have a billion memories for. This isn't even half of them, but I've gone on long enough. This game also had a crazy development history. You start when Sonic 1 wrapped up development. It was a big hit, but Yuji Naka, the programmer behind Sonic 1, left Sega because he didn't feel like he was being paid or valued enough. Mark Cerny, who nowadays is best known for his work at Sony, went to talk to Naka and got him to join Sega Technical Institute in the US after promising him better treatment. Sonic 2 was developed without most of the original Sonic team, with Naka being joined by Sonic 1's original level designer, and this is where I pronounce the Japanese wrong name and get it wrong, Hirokazu Yashuhara. I hope I said that close enough. The original creator of Sonic himself, Naoto Oshima, was put in charge of what apparently was first conceived as a Sonic 2 port to the Sega CD. 
overseeing what was left to teams behind games like Revenge of Shinobi and Streets of Rage. Unlike Sonic 1, we are lucky enough to have a couple of prototypes of Sonic CD. The one shown is from a Japanese event from December 1992, almost nine months before the final Japanese release in September 1993. At this time, the game was being named CD Sonic, which, thank god they changed that, and the game is in a very buggy early state. The present looks a lot like the good future, and only the first two levels of Palm Tree Panic are available. Also the time travel, when it does work, sounds like this and all I can say is thank god it's over. When you finish the two levels, coming soon shows up in big letters. And the animation is still in the final game funny enough. There's a ton of smaller stuff in the ROM as well. I personally noticed that I'm pretty sure the spring jump sprite is a poor edit of Sonic 1's. The Sonic 1 spring jump sprite is missing the uh, stripe on Sonic's shoe. And in this sprite here it looks very hastily drawn on. But when you do a spring jump in Sonic CD, in the final game, you do a spin, which uh, obviously means they had to make new animations for it, so they didn't end up using this. Also, in the past, Palm Tree Panic's music is actually CD audio, which isn't like the final game, and that's really cool to hear. This is most of the huge noteworthy stuff. However, a fun surprise was found in this build's time attack mode. Apparently when this build was made, Palm Tree Panic was once known as Salad Plane, and that has been a meme. <laughs> a programmer on Twitter was recently asked about any other early level names, and he told us that Wacky Workbench was once known as Crazy Toy Box. The last thing I want to bring up before we talk about the final game is R2, or Round 2 as it's known. Ever since the PC release of Sonic CD, it was discovered that R2 was empty with Round 1 being Palm Tree Panic and R3 being Collision Chaos. So that means that the second stage of the game is lost to time. The evidence of what R2 was is slim. There's a Marble Zone looking part of the extended ending of the non-Sega CD versions. So it is commonly believed that this area, which has been dubbed uh, Relic or Regal Ruins by fans, even though I'm pretty sure that's the name of one of the Sonic R levels, is the true form of the second level, but we may never actually see the 16-bit art. The earliest later prototype from around May already has it gone, and there's no level select data past level 2 of Salad Plane here. We can't even see what the other levels were, so there it is. The only site we have of round 2 being in Sonic CD, in all the builds that we have, and honestly it's just a little sad that we may never know more about the lost level. Honestly though, the prototypes of CD have enough content to be their own video, so I will be cutting it here. But everyone at Sonic Retro, the cutting room floor, and DRX, the man responsible for lots of these prototypes being found, deserve lots of gratitude. Alright, once again, the soundtrack is pretty much the last thing I have to defend here. It could very well be the best soundtrack in the entire series, or at the very least the classic series. But which one? <laughs> I guess I should explain. There are two completely separate soundtracks to the game for different regions. In Europe and Japan, and oh boy it's time to mispronounce Japanese names again, the soundtrack was composed by Naofumi Hataya, I hope I said that right, who has had a long career at Sega actually, and Masafumi Ogata, who worked at Sega until 95, then quit composing around 10 years after that. They both had previously worked together on the 8-bit Sonic 2, and actually the Japanese main theme, You Can Do Anything, otherwise known as Tutu Sonic Warrior, was originally composed for that game. Hiko Itoku? I hope I said that right again, I'm sorry. Another Japanese singer I as North American only know for Sonic seems very big as an artist, although if her Wikipedia page is complete and not segmented like I think it is, she has pretty large gaps in her career. For the North American version, the soundtrack was thought to be unsuited for a Western audience, so it was recomposed by Spencer Nelson. He did a lot of work for Sega for the Sega CD. The vocals for the new main theme of the game, the Sonic Boom, was done by the female group Matashe? I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, and it looks way too much like Pistachio Man. So which is better, the North American or the original Japanese? Well, that's tricky. Because as a North American, when I played the emulated version, it was the North American soundtrack so I, that I heard, so to be honest, I am way more nostalgic for that version. To be honest, I kind of wish I could Frankenstein stitch together both versions together for the ultimate soundtrack. Now the first thing to know is that in the past versions of each zone, 
the soundtracks are the exact same because those tracks are not CD audio. So as for a complete soundtrack, the obvious winner is the Japanese version because only it was the complete soundtrack. But overall, I prefer the sound of the American soundtrack. For example, Tidal Tempest, Start at Speedway, the end of level theme, which just makes you feel really good inside. <laughs> the Speed Shoes theme, not just being the theme song of the game. And speaking of the theme, I just like both versions of Sonic Boom over You Can Do Anything in Cosmic Eternity. But all four of them are great songs. There are parts of the Japanese version I like better, like Collision Chaos, which is just so much better than the Japanese. But this is definitely a lesser opinion because most people prefer the Japanese soundtrack as far as I understand. Let's do a quick summary of the levels, quicker than what I did with Sonic 1. A thing to know is that CD built on a lot of the level themes from Sonic 1, so a lot of those levels have a Sonic 1 equivalent. The only one really without one is actually Marvel Zone because technically R2, if the cutscene is anything to go by, was the equivalent. Palm Tree Panic is obviously the Green Hill equivalent, and we meet Amy here unless you were a manga reader in 1992 in Japan. The boss here is the funniest Sonic boss ever to me, this big mecha suit Robotnik has to fight you and then you can start the fight behind him and destroy it in seconds. Collision Chaos is Spring Yard Zone, the splicers from Sonic 2, except these ones have their projectiles be able to be blocked by Sonic Spin. HA! Take that Sonic 2 you bastard! We meet Metal Sonic here who kidnaps Amy. Guess we know what we're doing here. The boss is a pinball field where you either clear it in seconds or get stuck for 6 minutes. Part of the problem is the projectiles where Botnich shoots. They bounce you all over the place, which is a big problem in the pinball field. Tidal Tempest is next, and I love this take on Labyrinth. It's not that long or hard, and there's a lot of vertical speed moments. If Hydrocity didn't exist, I would say this is the best classic water level. This boss though is kind of stupid. It's just kind of getting through a shield of air bubbles while he tries to shoot you with bullets. He's lucky his fat ass doesn't drown. Quartz Quadrant is one of the two levels that doesn't really have a Sonic 1 equivalent. In this stage, which seems to be based on some kind of mine, there's plenty of speed sections that can have you through this in no time. The boss is all vertical with Robotnik playing dumb with a drill. Wacky Workbench is next, and this is everyone's least favorite level and I'm kind of in agreement. It's got a cool gimmick with a bouncy floor that shoots you sky high. The problem is really that you have to go low in the level, so you're always fighting against it, which is a shame. But there are parts I do like, like the bars you rotate around that are really fun. The boss here is Robotnik dropping bombs on you as you try to destroy his capsule with the treadmill's friction before being skewered by spikes. Stardust Speedway is a gorgeous representation of Starlight Zone, with a huge open maze filled track for Sonic to find his way through. I love the lights and I'm very glad that this is the level they use for Mania. The other thing to note is the boss, where you race Metal Sonic to the end of the path to save Amy. This is one of the best bosses in this game, and in the classic series in general. The last zone is Metallic Madness, obviously taking cues from Scrap Brain Zone. There's a cool shrinking gimmick that lets you see and control a Chibi Sonic. Unfortunately, the boss level is my least favorite level in the game. For one thing, to my knowledge, it has one of the only bottomless pits in the game. It might be the only one. But I can't be sure of that. And it can be pretty hard to get to the path that you have to. And this would be fine enough, but then it traps you in this room with this light bug badnik thing and you have to defeat three of them, and I'm still not fucking sure where their fucking hitbox shows up on these bastards. It seems really inconsistent, just like doing the level select code in Sonic 3 alone. This Robotnik boss is also a joke and that just pisses me off even more. Special stage rings from Sonic 1 are back where you collect 50 rings and at the end of the stage jump into the giant ring. This time though, it's a 3D special stage that looks a lot more like Mode 7 on the Super Nintendo in games like Super Mario Kart. The goal here is to smash UFOs by jumping into them before the time runs out. You have a crazy amount of time to start, but you lose 10 seconds every time you land in water, so just be careful. This can be tricky to pull off at first, Sonic runs automatically and sometimes the UFO's hitbox is a little bit janky. But if you are ever low on time, a UFO that doesn't count towards the total spawns is really easy to hit, usually pretty easy compared to the other ones. And if you destroy it, you get 30 seconds more time. And therefore, hypothetically, you could be in the special stage forever until you get all the UFO's. But instead of 6 Chaos Emeralds, we collect 7 Time Stones which ultimately only do one more thing for you than the emeralds did, and I'll explain. 
In every stage besides boss levels in the past, there's a robot generator. If you smash it, you'll have saved the future from Robotnik's control and created a good future where technology and nature coexist. Do this in both acts of a stage and the boss level will be a good future too. Do this in every level and you'll get the good ending possibly without time stones and this is what makes Sonic CD different than all the other classic Sonic games. It gives you two different ways to get the same goal. Personally, I prefer getting the time stones, but if you wanted to go slower and explore the stages, that is possible too. And while the stages feel more maze-like than normal, I love the depth. Every stage besides boss levels have four different versions. Past, present, and the good and bad features. It makes this one feel so much more replayable than the other ones in my opinion for just how much changes and how much variety there can be in one playthrough. And I just love it for that. I will say this though, as much as my fanboyism cries for this game, I know deep down Sonic 3 Knuckles is the better Sonic game critically. It has more levels, more characters, much more in depth with everything. And really, the only thing I can say this game truly does better than it is the soundtrack. But this one just means more to me. I love all of the classic Sonic games, even though I want to take Sonic 2 into the corner for a few things, the spoiled little brat. But overall, this one is my favorite. And I know Sonic Mania exists. That Sonic Games release was like the second coming for me. And I bought it like eight times more. More on that another time. <laughs> but I want to wait to see what this game feels like just a few years later before I start including it on the tier list. But if you really want to know, it goes like this. CD is obviously my favorite, with 3K right behind it. Mania is right behind that, like really close, but one day it could surpass 3K because technically it is the only one that came out in my lifetime. So I do think a nostalgia factor for its release could become a factor. Sonic 2 is next, but not by much over Sonic 1. I will admit it did flesh things out from one and overall it's a better game. I just hate how it always gets a pass despite the end of it and how dull Hilltop is. It's much more fascinating to me as a look into game development though. I will end this on a note for Sega. Update the damn ports and get them on a platform besides Xbox since cross compatibility. Put the damn 1 and 2 remasters on a console now, it's been 7 years. And if you didn't offer Taxman work after Mania on either another new game or the remaster people have been asking for and you know damn well which one, that will legitimately be the stupidest thing you as a company will ever do and you guys did the Sega Saturn launch. Hey everyone. Alright, so this is a bit of a different part of the video. I haven't ever done this before, so I hope you'll forgive me. Um, I decided to try to have a bit more of an open type of video here. Sonic CD is a very controversial game, right? So I thought, why not run through some other people's opinions? I got inspired because of uh, Sonic Retro, honestly. But I also asked on Reddit, and that's where we're going to start. I got some replies here about what people thought about Sonic CD. So I'm going to read them out, okay? Just a little weird part of the video. I apologize if this isn't your thing. Alright, so Bro Tips wrote, I think the game is an absolute blast, with some of the highs being the exploration and Metal Sonic Race, and some of the lows being Wacky Workbench and most of the boss fights. It's strange because while a lot of the level design doesn't exactly promote speed or feel like a Sonic game, the overall design of the game is vibrant and screams Sonic in every way. And don't even get me started on the soundtrack. So basically, even if the level design isn't designed to uh, utilize Sonic's abilities to the best ways, it's still a lot of fun to explore, beat the special stages, and overall goof around and have fun. Is it a good Sonic game? It's subjective, really. Is it a good video game in general? Absolutely. Oh yeah, I played the mobile version. Um, he also wrote that he prefers the Japanese soundtrack. I just removed all my comments so that people can't see them. Alright. Uh, sorry, just... Mr. D73. <laughs> Funny name. I've been playing the mobile ports on Apple TV, so I've been able to play with a physical controller. See, I need to get an Apple TV just for that reason. I want to play Sonic 1 and 2 mobile on a TV with a console and a controller. The first time I played through Sonic CD was just straight through, and I thought the game was fun, but really short with some di interesting boss fights. I went back and played it again, working to find the ways back to the past and destroying the robot genera generators to 100% the game. 
I found it much more entertaining that way. See, I knew there had to be some people that preferred it, preferred uh, finding all the robot generators. I'm just not one of those type of gamers. I believe, I'm just gonna quickly open this. All right, so he likes both different types of soundtracks. So he doesn't really have a preference, but he does say that the American aged better. Fair enough. Uh, Frickaroni? Frickserononi? I don't know how to say that. The maze-like level design is unorthodox for a Sonic game, and tra time travel can be a bitch, but it's definitely a good game. It was easily the best on the Sega CD. I think he means best game on the Sega CD, because... I don't think he means he, it's the best game. It's overall best played on the Sonic Sega CD, which is just wrong. God, you know, I minimized these so that people can see what I wrote. Uh, all right, so he wanted the Japanese soundtrack. I, I guess I thought I would memorize it, but I can't. <laughs> all right, D for dumbass wrote, What versions? I played the PC version, Japanese soundtrack. Overall opinion, I think it's pretty neat, but not a perfect Sonic game. The concept of saving planets... Plants instead of animals seems like a logical conclusion, and the whole idea of Little Planet is pretty neat. Metal Sonic and Amy were nice inclusions that became mainstays. It also shows us more of what a Robotnik victory would look like. The special stages are mimicking 3D like always in a 2D Sonic game, which are pretty great. The level design can be pretty confusing at times since it can go up, down, left, or right, or all around <laughs> at any point. It also has a banger soundtrack like the rest of the Sonic games. Anything else, you can use this comment and discuss it. No need to censor names here. So I asked everybody before I wrote this. I mean, this entire post is so that I could get some people's opinions. Um, I can tell this guy really wanted to be in the video because uh, he formatted it in such a clear, concise way. <laughs> All right. Mad Doc 3D wrote, I played the PC version when I was a kid, then the Gems Collection, and now I play the Taxman port, which is definitely the best way to play the game. I agree with that. Sonic CD is my favorite 2D Sonic game for a handful of reasons. I love the emphasis on exploration, the time travel mechanic, the psychedelic arc direction, especially the music. I prefer the Japanese soundtrack, but the US OST is great too. And I think the introductions of Amy and Metal Sonic are a bonus too. The race of metal is a bit of a letdown, but I think it's a really cool and memorable moment. The level design can be confusing and frustrating, but I think the game's strengths more than make up for that, and I like the playground-like structure. The bosses all pretty much suck, but that at least they're pretty easy, and I'll give points for creativity and a few few of them, like the pinball one. Okay. No, I, I get that. All right. So here's the thing, you know, I'm not trying to show bias because, you know, it's my favorite Sonic game, all right? I, I did try my very best to get some negative opinions too. It just happened that I got more positivity. And it makes sense because on Reddit, um, you can get upvoted and downvoted. And honestly, it kind of sucks that way because most people just downvote opinions they consider wrong. <laughs> but there's never any wrong opinions. Um, People just use the downvote button kind of wrong. So I'm going to upload this guy for trying. Yeah. Here. All right. So this is a negative opinion. I don't agree with it, but he's more than welcome to his opinion. Splatfan1 wrote, I played it on my phone, and I gotta say I don't like it that much. It's a bit too much exploration for me. I can take things slow, but I like to push forward in my Sonic game. The level design feels random at times with some of the springs, enemies, or bumpers, even sometimes even the layout. Sometimes all the weird stage gimmicks make levels a chore. Of course I'm talking about Wacky Workbench, but it's not the only one. The bosses are lame. The levels for me feel like Sonic 1 in a drugs on drugs in a way? Um, okay. But mostly the stages are just not fun for me. The time travel gimmick is made a little irrelevant since you can just collect the time stones, making exploring seem worse. Then again, sometimes it's hard to keep your rings because of the level design. Either way, I dislike it. Some of my more minor complaints are the weak spin dash, the peel out for being the spin dash but you're not in a ball, and you're unprotected, and the, the game is just a little bit too vibrant. There are, of course, things I like. Both soundtracks are amazing. The bad mix are cool. The general atmosphere of the game isn't different from others than from the uh, classic games. And the game has heart. There's Amy and Metal, always a good thing. The special stages are the best part of the game for me. I love them. I don't know how much it affects my opinion, but I love 3 and K and Mania, easily the two best design classics. Fun fact. Sonic, Sonic releases plant seeds instead of animals. Having seeds in storage is actually used in real life to save plants from from extinction. There's a seed fault in Norway. 
So Sonic might just be committing plant genocide. Use as much of this as you want. I'm not too sure about that. It seems a bit of a stretch, but you know what? You're welcome to your opinion. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm going to cut real quick. We're going to be on retro in just a second. I'm hoping this will work the way I think it will. Okay, so this is a Speedstar TMQ's response that I uh, wanted to steal for the video. Um, this was written without the idea of my video existing, so I didn't ask this person before he wrote it. I just liked what he wrote so much, I asked him if he could be in the video, and he agreed. He was really nice about it, too, I gotta say, so, you know, shoutouts to him. Um, anyway, uh, so it's in response mostly to um, Frostaff, which I, full disclosure, forgot to ask him about this, so I for I'm sorry if you don't want to be in the video. Um, I will probably um, edit that out. But he basically wrote that, you know, you're just supposed to replay it over and over again and that the design needs to be uh, replayed. Basically, I'm hoping that's just a general summary but because I, I didn't ask to read him, read his comment. This is the comment I asked to read. This is a great assessment of 2D Sonic games up to Sonic Rush. I would say I'm a wizard at 2D Sonic games, and when Mania came out, I assumed I'd be a breeze, able to breeze through it. Because, well, how could I not? Turns out I died a lot. I was so mad and I was ready to play level design, because frankly, a lot of enemies feel cheaply placed. But then I stopped, started dying less upon repeat levels, even was, when I wasn't sure where to go and was unfamiliar with the full level layouts. I realized that muscle memory was key, and I found that knowing uh, time and some movements and assumed enemy placement in advance without really thinking about it. I got really good at Mania to the point where I can do it in one sitting with emeralds and die a maximum of one or two times if I'm unlucky. I've probably played it a good 50 hours at this point, which to be honest isn't that much for me considering I've probably played the other ones for about a thousand hours. Sonic is about memorization, rhythm, and patterns, and building understanding through repeated play. Sega, and by extension their Mega Drive and Genesis console, basically the same console, just depending on your region, sorry, was all about the home arcade experience, where repeated plays made you better at the game, in increasing your chance of success. Sonic just hides the, this well because it's cutesy platforming fa facade, because it hides this well under its cutesy cool platforming facade, sorry about that which people automatically assume is just like Mario, but more physics-based terrain. Each Sonic title seems to have a different rhythm from the last, and I chalk that down mostly to the type of enemies found in each game coupled with the attacks the player has at their disposal. Some people, dis some people dislike CD because they hit a lot of enemies, and this is usually due to the people using the super peel out too freely and not learning their lessons, not taking note of enemy rhythm and the placement by noting the way the environment gives them hints about what's to come. In other Sonic games, this isn't so much of an issue because Sonic's role is the primary source of his acceleration, and they don't have secondary objectives such as time traveling. This isn't to say that Sonic CD and other titles don't have some dick enemy placements because it definitely does, but it's not as frequent as people make out. See, I agree with this. You know what? Every one of the classic Sonic games has a bit of muscle memory built in about it. They were designed that way. So that's why I really wanted to use this quote. I'm sorry about that other person. I'll probably let him know. And if he really wants to be in the video or doesn't want to be, I will um, re-edit it and uh, take it out. So yeah, I'm going to cut to the other person whose permission I have. Kia Saren Su wrote, and I'm sorry, I tried to remove as much of the other person's stuff as I could. I just don't like CD. I think it just does too many things poorly for me to consider it a good game. I see a lot of people default to the just replay it until you've mastered it response, I really disagree with it. I played all of these games in a healthy amount of times, and I feel I don't feel comfortable going fast in this game. Nothing about the hazard placement or geometry feels like it was thought out besides Palm Tree Panic, and that's only because it's spatially designed like Green Hill was. I dread going fast because I know I'm going to hit some stupid spring or spike that I can't humanly react to due to movement speed and camera. I can cautiously tiptoe, yes, but I don't find that fun in any platformer. 
much less one with a character who controls like Sonic does. I played a disgusting amount of Mania and even did a lot of speedrunning to the point that I could get to most of the in-game leaderboards. I was able to feel confident and secure in my speed because many of the rough edges of level design have been rounded off. There aren't that many invincible enemies, there's plenty of useful power-ups to grab, and there aren't that many springs and spikes randomly spewing about. In contrast, it feels like any time I can go fast in 1 or CD beyond the first zone is because of dumb luck, and I'm at its sequence. Or in spite of the level design, stop and go spin dashes at every other moment, or because I just outright skip chunks of the stage. It feels like the level design is at odds with the concept of fluid mo movement altogether. If I'm going fast, it's a fluke and it won't last me very long. I don't think it's CD's level design works very well as an explore exploratory game, either. Levels aren't laid out in interesting ways and they can be pretty cum cumbersome to navigate due to all their set pieces that they want to throw you this way and that. Finding generators can be a chore because of how restricted and occasionally obtuse the routes to them can be. Time travel in itself can be a pain in the ass to accomplish unless the level design gives up and provides a mindless automatic, automated segment to time travel with. The annoyance of keeping 50 rings for just one chance at one of the most annoying special stages to date is another factor that stops me from actually aiming for the good ending. Playing the game like a normal game just leaves me with an un incredibly unsatisfying, often annoyed levels that I wouldn't want to go back go go out of my way to replay over these levels over the others these days i guess i'm just the odd one that doesn't like the aesthetics i found the music annoyingly cheesy and i don't like for i do not like the ridiculous color pal palettes that every stage in this game has to have i'd always prefer to play just sonic one again despite as many rough patches i it provides me with it provides me with a more interesting platforming and it feels satisfying Satisfyingly lengthy, Sonic CD just feels like a much more chaotic and obnoxious version of Sonic 1. And you know what? That's a pretty fair opinion to have. Um, some people just don't like the aesthetic, and that's completely okay too. Um, uh, you know, I'm just a little worried about being able to like, see the comments like right here. I really hope that's not a big issue with anybody. This is DC Fan 200, CEO of Not Whole Freedom Fighters on Twitter. Uh, you can see his uh, at right there. Um, so he's not a big classic Sonic fan. He told me that before we uh, went into this. Um, I thought he made a point that he wanted to use before, but then he uh, posted this whole thing, so I figured that this is his what he wants to be in the video. Um, he's really cool. He's also got a YouTube account. Like, go check it out. Um, I'm pretty sure it's DC Fan 200. Could be wrong on that. You can find it on his Twitter though. It's right there. Anyway, as a Sonic game, it's a game that implemented a few unique ideas, and this franchise could always use several more unique ideas. Something the fandom doesn't understand because they wish to hate on Unleashed 06 for the millionth time in a decade without rhyme or reason. It's not too creative, but it's great for a classic Sonic game. As a video game, well, as with almost all Sonic games, it requires a formidable degree of skill. I feel that's why, that's part of the reason why Sonic games get so much hate right now. People lack skill in video games and it shows, but instead of getting better, they blame the game itself. It's part of the reason Sonic games have always been marketed towards teens, not small children. As for the soundtrack, I don't have a natural preference, but if I had to choose, it would probably be the American soundtrack, especially in the Metal Sonic fight. It gives the sense that you're not completely fighting Metal Sonic for fun, but for a purpose. Sort of like the feeling you're fighting for your hopes and dreams against an opponent who will put your skills and intellect to the limit. I really like that part. Because it reminds me of the text that's on the uh, Japanese boxes of uh, Sonic 1 and CD. 1, 2, and CD and stuff like that. Some real inspirational shit, and I feel like he really nailed that aesthetic there. I don't know. I really like that part. In short, as a Sonic game, CD doesn't feel completely... CD doesn't completely change how Sonic games are defined back then. But it made quite a few notable improvements. Being time travel, the new special stages, going through the stages... Okay, I read that right. Breaking Metal Sonic holograms in the past to prevent a horrible future ending, etc. As a video game itself, it's an enthralling experience which does not berate the game if you lack what's necessary to pick it up and play without getting losing without losing your rings every 10 seconds or dropping it in a bottomless pit. So you know what I had to say? 
you know, I didn't get as many negative responses as I was hoping for because obviously it seems like I'm just handpicking out like responses I want to show, you know, but I also feel that, you know, maybe the game's outlook hasn't been as negative as I thought. You know, I've seen a lot of YouTubers out there posting videos about how CD is just, just a terrible game. But honestly, these opinions have been very balanced. And even in the soundtrack department, where I, I, I said that I thought the Japanese soundtrack was more popular, I'm getting way more support for the American soundtrack, and that's pretty cool to see after all these years. It's definitely been a very weird experience with this game, and I gotta say, it's been really interesting doing this part. I don't know if this is gonna be a thing I do more often, but it's definitely something I enjoy doing, so I appreciate that. To everyone who uh, offered to be in my video, I really appreciate it. I cannot stress that enough. Um, this is completely unscripted, by the way. I'm just reading what they say and talking about it. <laughs> kind of more like my Let's Play format. So I just wanted to say thanks to everybody You know, for watching my videos. I just recently hit over 40 subscribers, and that's a big deal for me. And I just got to say thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Um, I guess this is the end of the video, so have a good one, guys. I, <laughs> I'm going to start like tearing up. Have a good one, guys. Uh, just remember, if you're new to the channel, maybe think about supporting me, growing my fan base. Um, I have to say, I don't know if it'll be ready, but I will try to have it ready for today, uh, the release date of the video. Uh, we're opening up a Discord because I was requested it by a few people, so... If you feel like you want to join a Discord with me in it, just feel feel free to throw me a message. Um, we're probably going to take anybody who wants to be in there. So you can find my Twitter, at Blue Genocide, or you could possibly message me on YouTube and we can figure out some other way I can get a hold of you to send you a link. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of big things happening for the channel right now. And yeah, I guess that'll be it. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.